Hey everybody, I'm Angus McIntyre. Thank you for checking out Mac Messing with the McIntyre on DJB Productions. I'm here alongside with my brother Johnny. Don't forget to hit subscribe down below. And if you like what you see, maybe hit the uh, notifications button. But Johnny, I'm going to throw it over to you. How you doing today? What's up, Angus? What are you driving, man? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Right, man, what are you doing in your car? I'm just chilling. I had to get away. I had to escape all the noise. I just had to escape the noise. <laughs> just let me know that I'm much younger, significantly more handsome brother, the Celtic Casanova, Johnny McIntyre. I'm the older, and I am Angus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get started, I just let's crack, crack on. on. I Cheers, just, uh, good brother. Cheers, Salantia. Salantia. So, uh, we've been on quarantine now for what? About two and a half months? Two months? Yeah, I haven't seen you in forever. Like, feels six, like, feels six, like seven three years. years. It you feels ready, like about a year. Get back to bartending, uh, dude. I cannot wait to get back to work and bartending. Um, I missed a lot of money this weekend with graduation. Ton of money. Uh, uh, was this weekend? Yeah, yeah. I saw a bunch of uh. Yeah, they were a all bunch of the kids walking partying in the yard. I saw a bunch of kids walking by the Seven Eleven and in their little gear, like like all all sour pussing and stuff. Uh, it's like we, when we were yeah. big shit in high school, hanging out at the Wendy's. Yeah. I mean, I guess I feel bad for them, but at the same time, I wasn't a good student. I, I don't think I would care about walking graduation. I don't, know. I don't think I'd care either, but I do feel bad for the kids that do. I feel bad for the for the, the so, simple weak ones that need it, people that need gratification. So, so you're really you're really ready to get back to bartending and dealing with society again after all this? Oh, I've been I've been home every day or over all the you know just over family members. You, need, you just need to see people, but do you forget how much we hate people? No, because I hate people every day when I'm in Wawa and just even driving around and people are self-quarantining from themselves in their own car by themselves. So so what? Between both of us, we've got, what, about 20 years experience in the bar? Yeah, about that, about management, that. Maybe 18 and a half. Bar back, maybe. security, whatever. Yeah, so we have some horrible stories. So we used to, we used to bounce for a college bar that we're not going to mention that name at all. Not on oh, your no. shirt. No. no, it's definitely not on my shirt. So, for for you, what were, what were some of your worst memories bouncing? We'll start with bouncing, since that's how we bouncing? got started. The worst memory. Oh, well, it was actually like I felt amazing about myself. One of the worst memories, bouncing, but at the same time, good memory bouncing. I had to go to court and everything about this. Drop charges because I felt bad about the kid. Um, some kid swung on me. Or the kid. I don't know how you. I did it. <laughs> yeah, but I shot in under him. And had him in a half Nelson doubled over. I was pretty amazed with myself. I stopped and admired my work. Next thing I know is I have him doubled over. He's biting my forearm. And I had to run and get well vodka to pour and disinfect it. Who would a think about these times? You know? for you, a little for the wound? Yeah, yeah I, of course I took a little. I mean, it's well vodka. How can you not? <laughs> have it, have yeah, it on the it. hips, but trouble for the hips, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. well, it puts hair on your back. At least that's, at least that's what I attribute to my grandmother. Well, that's how you got your first ball hair. So, I mean, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, how about so the time? You remember one time the... we were bouncing at the door? I'm not going to mention who we were working with, but every time he put on his gloves, you knew some shit was going to go down. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You Is that the same time gentleman that used to? Ball? He was, it, it's me, you, and, and two black dudes working in the door together. And yeah. he's, he's calling me racist. And then our friend with the gloves steps in front of us. He, fought, he spits in both of our faces. The cops are outside. Yeah. He trips up over the kid outside. They're lying. He's laying on top of him. So then we drag him around the corner. We see the cops there, but you spit in my face, game over. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. Dude, that's we one of the most the violent things. He somehow got on our gloved friend. And yeah. So I grabbed him. I stuck two fingers underneath his ribs and pulled as hard as I could and drove oh, yeah, him by like his ribs. You gave him the old stepdad tickle. The stepdad, the, the Uncle Gene. Yeah, the Uncle Gene, where you you push somebody in their ribs until they turn under their stomach. Grab him in the ribs. We drug him around the corner and beat the shit out of the kid. The cop came yeah. over, and he's like, what in the hell are you two doing? This is out of yeah, character. Yeah. And I go, he's spitting our face. He's like, just don't kill him, and he walked off. Yeah. Well, spitting spit in someone's face is one of the most vile things you can do, um, especially in these times. 
But it, yeah. it honestly you know, is you know, very vile. Vile is yeah. going into the women's room at two fifteen in the morning and seeing the mess that they left. Yeah, I I never understood why women get such so many bloody noses when they're out drinking. Um, I don't know if it's like an altitude thing from dancing on the third floor or not. Um, it's an allergy to like, cranberry juice. I go, I go into those um those personal stalls. The, so in the women's room, there's a stall, and then every stall has a, a personal like trash can. And like, dude, dude, there's tons of girls with bloody noses every night drinking. I, you go into the trash can to pull it out, and it's like you have to have gloves on you. There's no, there's never syringes or anything. Just a bunch of bloody napkins in those personal trash cans. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep moving here. Uh, so I think there's an edit bottom. How about the nights like how many different bathroom stalls did they build for the one toilet that's in the bathroom? Every night we were in there, it would it was like every time they rebuilt this wall around the toilet, it was like John Paul yeah. Van Dam or Chuck Norris spent the night in there and they kicked it down, broke it off the walls until they fortified it and made it like a like a cinder block wall around the toilet. That yeah, was I think like vomit and the trowel and everything. Oh, dude, the trail was one of the most vile things ever. I'm lagging. I don't know if I just keep going. I mean, I'm just lagging here. Anyway, if you, dude, one night I went in there and the trail's uh, thing was broken. I'm just frozen. So anyway, um, I'm gonna just real quick while he's figuring his thing out. I my worst shift ever behind the bar. This was all one shift. God's honest truth. So my shift starts off, it was a day shift in Norristown. That should tell you enough about what's going on. Um, so I start the shift. My first customer of the day orders two plates of wings. There's yeah. no discussion of being behind the bar and watching people eat wings. For, this now, guy's got a full-on bib going. He's got full-on bib going. Every, he finishes his beer. He must have shoved about 20 grimy wing sauce drenched wing wing napkins inside the pint glass leaves it for me and then asks for another pint glass so then immediately what did he, do with the pint glass? What? Did, he did he throw his carcasses in the pint glass no just he packed it so tight with napkins i just threw the yeah. pint glass out yeah i didn't even want to do it i was just like you're done that, that's like when we used to throw the glassware out after our co-worker used to drink from it yeah <laughs> Give a oh my guys. god! Yeah, because you can, you don't know you don't want to pass nothing back and forth, you know. No, we don't need and that. I think people who stack their wing bones like in a symmetrical way on their plate are serial killers. Oh, they're definitely killing somebody, not just birds. Why? Why would you lay bones like all sequential and stuff? It's it's nasty. Like your your tongue and mouth been in there. Just, yeah, just so drop get, it. So getting back to the my Norristown shift. So the next customer comes in literally maybe 10 minutes after the wing guy. He, him and his wife sit down. The guy has a trach in his throat. I'm wondering what's going to happen here. Like I, this already to me is I'm interested. I want to see what's happening. Of so, course. so they order, they order drinks. And I'm like, all right, well, I, I don't know much about trachs. Like, is he going to drink? Did he need a decarbonated drink? Did he and need a decarbonated drink? So before, no, they order okay. So a couple, she orders a white wine, he orders a Captain and Coke. So, yeah, that sounds highly carbonated for a tray cold. So that's what I'm wondering: who's getting which? How this is going to happen? So then she <laughs> reaches into his drink, pulls out the two cocktail straws. You always need two. Takes out the two yeah. cocktail straws, takes off the little covering on his trach, and starts yeah, the digging around gonna... and swishing inside the trach, cleaning it out, and then puts the straws. Back in the cocktail, and he proceeds yeah. to drink it. That that is vile. That, that was, that was, that was that I'll never forget as long as I live. That I had I had a grandfather with a tray hole, and like you you took good clean precaution of that. You would that that's one of the most disgusting. You took care of it in the car before you come in. You yeah, yeah. I like how I like how the straw is half sanitized. It's Jack and Coke. Like at least there's Absolutely. some like some cleanser on there, you know. <laughs> But it's just, and then what, what do you think happened with those cocktail straws after the after the drink was done? They probably weren't missing. Nope, they were sitting on the bar. They took them out of the drink and laid them on the bar. Oh, my God. So then, like, oh the, the biggest the biggest nightmare of working a solo shift is when you got to take a poop. When you gotta, yeah, when yeah you we've all been there. We've all been there. 
We're going to make it again. Same yeah. shift with the trait guy. Trait you do it with your same finger or your thumb? Yeah, it's just you got to make. Yeah, yeah. I thought you did it with your finger. No, it's like this, in and out. Oh, God. I yeah. think that's something else. That, yeah, then you can't do that. It's this. Yeah, it's and the then, other one. Yeah. No, so then I, I have to, like, I, I can't take any more. I'm like, this is my time. I don't care what happens. I'm going to go. I'm going to go make. Yeah, so, you just apologize to everybody around you. So I go in the bathroom. There's this guy in there. And I can hear, like, I'm in the stall, and I can hear him. And he's talking to himself at the urinal. And he's like, he, he's just talking. So he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. Like, oh, this. <laughs> and he's, oh, yeah. He's like, you look so good oh, today. Yeah. You look so cool, big God. and so full. And, and I, 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 I come out of the room, and I'm like, I'm thinking he's on FaceTime or something. He's just <laughs> staring down at his, at his, uh, his unit. And and give himself a pep talk to get out there, and then he's like, he's, he gets that little like Vince McMahon swagger going, yeah. and he walks back to the date at the table. I wonder if he threw it in on top of like his one hand, then his bird, and then his other hand on top. What time is it? It's game time. Yeah, let's go. Gotta, he's just got popped by the gas station, get some gimmicks. He'll have all the the content yeah. he ever needs. There's something for everybody at the gas station. There There's is. something for everybody at the gas station. Yeah, so I, I, I made used to work at uh, PJ's, right? You yeah, that's course. like the one job we didn't have together. Um, uh, yeah. We used to have 17. this corner, corner booth where the DJ used to set up. Like it was clearly visible like adjacent yeah. to the bar. So we get this couple in there at happy hour. Like they're getting hot and heavy from the get-go. Pound and drink after drink after drink. They're just – it's getting hotter. It's getting heavier. Oh, they start yeah. to – everybody's starting to, to turn their bodies and shift their bodies. Yeah, and watch reading body they're, language. They're putting on a show like show and tell after 10. And they're just going at it. So we renamed the booth Booth 69. So yeah. Booth 69, like this this woman's, her, her little tennis skirt came down around her knees. And they're over there in the corner. And my manager wants to break it up. I'm like, there's nothing going on here. There's a bunch of like horny old men at the bar. He's like, let it play out. Yeah. Why not? So then not? they finally get up and leave. And everybody at the bar just starts standing up. Round of applause. Uh, it's just <laughs> wild. As they're like just that? going at it in the booth. Hopefully yeah. he didn't eat no Cheetos before. What what happened that time? I remember you telling me this one time before that like th this couple were out on a date and he ran off to the bathroom. And what, what was she doing with you? Oh, so she she slips me her number and I feel amazing. I feel incredible. I'm like, I feel like I'm God's gift to a woman right now because this dude's on an actual date. But I'm he's like pivot, he's like pivoting it hard and I'm just but she keeps looking at me and making eye contact. He gets up and goes to the bathroom. She slides me her number, and I'm like, "Oh, this is this." I feel I feel sad for him, and it's uncomfortable. But like, thank God, I still got it because I was like getting older at the time. And uh, next, next thing you know, he comes back, and she's like playing coy, like looking down at me, but like looking, she's looking down but looking up at me, and I'm just like, "Oh my God, this dude's chick wants me," and it just makes you feel good. You just feel oh, amazing absolutely. when it, when a chick wants you. So I see a dude next day. I'm like, "Oh, so so you and chick have a good time." Yeah, yeah, we were pretty good. I paid about fifty an hour for. Her. So she was pretty oh much just trying God. to. She was legit trying to prostitute herself out to me, and I'm sitting here like flattered and flabbergasted, like, oh man, I'm the dude. I still got it. I'm awesome. I still got looks. But and did you look like fifty dollars? Like if you were if you were gonna pay for it, like reasonably, what would you offer? Maybe like twelve, twelve wow. an hour. She had maybe like I don't know. I've never I've never done that, but I, maybe twelve. I don't I don't know. She's so, kind of middle aged. So we worked, had we worked at the hotel together, and yeah. you didn't work this Not shift long. with me, but there was this girl came in. She was, she looked like she was prepared in a in a lab. Like I felt like, yeah. like, like she looked like a weird science girl, like gorgeous. Was this when the dad from uh, uh, the one Kevin Orr was there? No, this was a separate shift. Huh. This was this was like a random like Wednesday night at ten o'clock. Yeah. So the the bar was a horseshoe, and she's at the end of the horseshoe peering up to both yeah. ends simultaneously almost at the same time a gentleman on the right gentleman on the left she's just watching i asked her i was like hey how you doing tonight you want to order a drink like i don't know yeah, what's going would on. You like a blue angel she didn't look like a hooker she looked like she was coming yeah. from prom to be honest i was like i gotta see her id <laughs> all that stuff <laughs> and she had this really nice like crossover dress and she to two guys one of them well dressed not so well to do the other one Dressed normal, very casually, Buku Dolores. Yeah. yeah. So they both are like, right, yeah, Bob, send her a drink. Johnny, send her a drink. 
And so I, I send her a drink. Time. And I send the other guy's drink over. He orders one for her simultaneously. And I put the two drinks in front of her. She's like, who are these from? Before she would accept the drink, she needed to know who it came from. She eyeballed them. She looked them over head to toe. And it wasn't like an eye fuck. It was like, I'm checking yeah, you out. I'm a trying scan, to. Like a Terminator you. scan. So she, she looks at the casual guy. She passes the chip back to me and says, no, nah, I'm not going to take this drink, but I'll take that drink. And points to the better <laughs> dressed gentleman. So then she asked me. She t I make her her drink. I, I, I don't remember what it was. Martini or something. Yeah. And probably. Something she fancy, high class. Good liquor. She wants, the, she wants the best bang for his buck. Well, literally. Um, so she she asked me for a piece of paper. She writes all this information on a piece of paper. I'm very curious at this point in time. She gives yeah, of course. Me the note. How did you she gives me the note. I deliberately fumble it to the ground so I could open it and read it. It's her yeah, phone yeah. number with her price chart. Gee, how how was the chart? Was it like a Venn diagram with circles and no, stuff? It, was like, like, it wasn't like a full menu like you hear about the cat house or anything. It was yeah. like um it was like, like an X axis and a Y axis. It was like three fifty three fifty for one hour, five for two. Which I mean if you're gonna step up, that's a good discount. That's uh, honestly, yeah, I guess yeah. Yeah, you're saving money. That's a, that's a, no, I mean, that's that's a to go for the two hours if you're not good looking. Yeah, you're a fool not to. You're, you're a fool not to go for the full two hours. Yeah. You know? But I, I mean, mean I, so then that's like when I figured out she's a hooker. I just couldn't believe it. Like she looks so, she just looked like a, a normal average woman. But, the, you know, I've heard stories at a hotel like they contributed to to like allowing that happen for a long time until they got. Yeah, I left, I, I left the servant shift one night at that hotel and, uh, I come back the next day and uh, supposedly like everybody was had to go up to the second floor and there was like a like legit everybody was covered in Vaseline doing meth and the entire second floor everybody every door was open and everybody's just in the hallway swinging with each other and everybody was just covered in lubricants and jaw jack in their uh, their jawline off I guess prostitutes um, in the bar will never go away. Oh, oh my God! What about our nightmare shift together at Flips that night? When we had to save somebody's life with a fake yeah, gun. Yeah, we finished our shift. It was three o'clock. We had to do the keg room. We were just having our post shift beer. What's it? It's already a daunting night when you know you have to do the keg room, and like we're just sitting there like lollygagging, trying to not do the keg room because it, it kind of sucks, and uh, and uh, none of our other coworkers would do the keg room. No, yeah, um, terrible. No, so like, oh, these two are young. Uh, they'll do the camera. So I remember like locking the door, and homeboy comes around the corner. He's like, oh, you got to come save me. You got to come save me. I was like, so I, I remember I went around because you were closing. So I was like, all right, I'll handle this. I'm, I'm a bouncer. I don't care. I'll handle this. I go around. There's some crazy chick. I come back and get you, Bob. I, I think this chick's serious. So you're, the first image of you, the first image you saw when you came in the house was, me going around hiding knives. No, I think you walked up well, on the side of the house. I've, I've known you all, all my life, and I'm telling you, I've never seen you scared of anything. God's <laughs> honest truth. I saw fear in your eyes when you knocked on that window, and you're like, yo, I need your help now. I don't think yeah, you was like droopy for help with anything. I was like droopy, dog. Like, everything just sunk. I was like, oh, my God, what are we getting into? I don't even think we locked up the bar. We, I hopped out the window. We left the no, window. No, no, yeah, we did, we did like a lock gimmick, like where, and then you came around. I think I already had all the knives hidden in the house. You threw so them as in. I was coming in because you ran back as I was leaving the bar. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I came in, you gather up everything sharp you could find in the kitchen. Why do you drink a beer like Donald Trump? The way he drinks. I'm not allowed to show. Yeah, you're taking your support a little too far. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so I see the fear in your eyes. I'm running down the house. I see you gather up everything ahead. sharp. You're looking around like, what the hell do I do with this? You just take a whole heave I, and chuck it over I'm the not, fence to the neighbor's yard. A heave of knives, a heave of, a heave of steak came, knives, cutlery knives, everything. And then when you came in, you walk into her pointing a gun at him and I, and he's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's just a BB gun. And then so she hit me in the knee with the with the like the like butt of the gun, like where you would put the clip. She hit me in the knee. And that was, a, like little, that was a really legit looking gun, but he's like, it's a BB gun. So I was like, all Dude, right. Don't worry, it's a BB gun. Yeah. So so we calm everything. Well, eventually, 
I think it's probably the first and only time I've ever had to call the cops because of uh, fear for somebody else's life. Oh, sure. And uh, remember talking to the cops like, dude, we were just around the corner. We, we still have to close this bar. It's 530 in the morning. Yeah. Like now, by this time, it's 530. We still have to do the daunting job of the tag room. I don't think I we just got, got hit. I just got hit in the knee with like a steel BB gun pellet, supposedly. So we run into the dude next day. And uh, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, you keep saying that gun's real. I mean, you keep saying that gun's fake. Like, dude, that, that my knee. I'm like, have a bit of a, a gimp in my walk today. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I just told you it was fake just so you guys wouldn't be scared. Oh, it's terrifying. I remember oh my doing God. that and, like, receiving my life cross before my eyes, like, after Yeah, that. yeah, like, again, yeah, like, a day later. Oh, my God. Was, that was... She was absolutely insane. They locked her up, she and they were, together, they were together again as soon as she got let out. Yeah, yeah, she was, she was like, uh, spread eagle, like, uh, like, dry humping them at the bar, like, a couple uh, months like later. Like, days later oh, like, hey, how are you? I'm still waiting yeah, for hey, how are you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I thought she was going to, like, Fight, I thought she was going to slide me her number. Oh, my God. What a crazy chick that was. That was awful. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Uh-oh. You hear that? Yeah, that must be the... It's that time. sounds familiar. It's time. Sweet sassy molassy. It's last call time. Woo! Time to take it home. Cheers, brother. Salancha. Thank you. So one last thing for our last call yeah. today. What is it that disturbs you the most or you hate most about any given bartending shit? What type of customer? Like if you could stereotype a customer, is it the group of moms that gets out once every three months and is cackling the whole night, yelling, gets drunk off of two cocktails, won't stop, hits on you while her husband's at home watching a kid? What is it? I oh. honestly... You go first. I hate the customer. I hate when a regular is in the bar and it's a busy night and there's a regular in the bar and he's like kind of flirting with a younger girl. And uh, all of a sudden it's like, you're working right to left, left to right. Like, you know, the gimmick, right to left, yeah. left to right, maybe even center left, center right. And uh, and ma maybe you're jumping around to take care of all the regulars. And all of a sudden there's a, there's a snap. There's a snap. Freaking snap right there in your face. It's the most annoying thing ever. Barkeep. Yeah, just like that. And all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, what's up, regular number A? Number A, letter A. And uh, you're like, he's like, hey, this girl wants a drink. I'm like, well, yeah, I will get to her as soon as I get to 17 other people. And, that's give probably the worst and make it strong. Make it yeah, strong. That's probably, that's probably the worst customer. Like when a regular, when a regular, like all week long, take is like a good regular, but then he just steps over that line and, and but you get it, though, with alcohol. Well, everybody does it. I do it. You do it. We have that one drink that's just one too many that sends us to where we want to be, but nobody else wants I've, us. I've been the biggest heel in my own bars, yeah. Yes, I've stabbed you with a fork in your forehead in bars and we, we worked in, yeah. We, we probably didn't work we, used to, we used to take the trays from the servers and beat each other in the head with oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hoffa, Hoffa. I slammed up one of those uh, drink servers, like, with the uh, jello shots over Hoffa's head, and I dented it, and it was, it was honestly terrible. I, I hate being a bad customer, but I'm a bad drinker. Oh, we were douchebags. What, what, what well, customer do you hate? We were trying to bar now, so we can judge everybody we want. Oh, I, I, I've always judged everybody. But what, what kind of customer do you hate, brother? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I think it's the screechy women, to be honest with you. I, I really can't. Yeah. Think there's nothing I'll walk away from quicker. Like, if I'm in a, if there's like two, three bartenders behind the bar and I see a group of like middle aged women come in, like the, yeah, single, like, yeah. Not single mom, but if I see like uh, like moms and stuff come in and they're yeah. just like, all right, I'll be right with you. And then they start to order their drinks. I'm like, no, no, no. I'll be right with you means I'm not going to retain any of this information. Yeah, you yeah. To... That, that's honestly one of the worst ever, honestly, when you're like, hey, guys, give me three minutes. I'll take a Diet Coke. Today's you get... my birthday. Do I get a free drink? I hate, I hate, I hate adults. Yeah, who would are having drive-by celebration birthdays right now. I get it for a sick little kid. Or wow, even a little kid. It. A little kid gets it. But the, the feel the feel that it's your birthday. Yeah. No, the, the, the quarantine birthday honk? Uh, yeah, that grinds I my have, gears. Yeah, that, that's actually what grinds my gears here on Last Call. And that is, yeah, so we're in unison then. Birthday drive-by celebrations for adults. 
Oh, it's it's terrible. My neighbor had it, and all it did was set my dogs into a fury. All I heard, all yeah. I had to do was bark, 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 bark. Yeah, yeah. I I I hate adults. That's all right there, right there. Well, this has been fun, awesome. Angus, man. It's good to see you, good brother. I hope we get to it's do this. It's good to see you, man. It's been way too long, at least seven months. I just, so, sent, you, I just sent you a gift. I saw you, your landscaper. Thank you. Yeah, then my dishwasher brought that to you. Yeah, but uh, oh, man. You know, it's good to see you. I hope everybody comes back. Good Check to see you, man. Week. Thank you, everybody, for checking out McIntyre. Messing with the McIntyre. For Angus, I'm Johnny. So and much. thank you for checking out Messing with the McIntyre here on DJB Productions. Like and subscribe. Five-star reviews. Nothing but.